little right and a lot wrong. The Raw Show with Rick Walker and Taylor Armstrong. Now, here's Rick and Taylor. Just before we started taping, there was a ring at your house. What happened there? What's going on? Well, I got a package delivered, and it's just in time because we're doing the reunion next week. So I ordered some earrings. (laughs) So, yes, we're going to open it because I'm not exactly sure what's going on in this box. But There's a lot of excess packaging going on there. A lot of packaging, and the box is kind of big, too. Oh, here we go. Oh, (laughs) it's like I bought myself a gift. (laughs) Yeah, and that big of a box for this. So here's the preview of the earrings you're going to wear at the reunion. No, at BravoCon or reunion. Um. Well, I'm gonna have you have to stay tuned to see where I wear them. I'm still unpacking. (laughs) More packaging. (laughs) Now there's a bag. More stuff. Wow. Oh wait. Let's just, let's just recap. Yeah. Um, this box okay. for these earrings. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <That's> right. <laughs> Ridiculous. How, how, how long does it take to get ready for a reunion? Because you guys are all dolled up on those things. Yeah. They usually block us like two hours for hair and makeup. And what do you just show up in sweats and no makeup? Yeah. <laughs> you have and to then do... let them work their magic. Do you have to do your hair first? No, we don't have to do anything. Wow. We just show up and let them take over. It's and you pretty bring, awesome. Do you bring your wardrobe with you that day? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And we submit different options and then we narrow it down and decide what's going to work with everyone else's outfits so that we're all coordinated or so that we don't all show up in the same color or, you know, so it makes you, a little bit more sense aesthetically. Do you get to see what the other ones are going to wear uh, ahead of time? Or are you surprised when they show up out there on the set? Well, typically um, I would just be surprised, but I'm so close with so many of the girls that we have kind of shown each other. Oh, I found this one. I found that one. I was with Shannon yesterday and she got one of her dresses delivered. And so I got to see that option and we were kind of showing each other some different pictures of things that we found. Yeah. What were you doing with Shannon, by the way, you're all over the interwebs, the worldwide interwebs, helping her move (laughs) where, where there was a comment under one of the pictures with you and Shannon, where she's moving you're helping her pack. God bless you. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> Nobody wants to help anybody pack and move. But there was a comment under there that the homeowners association was booting her because they didn't want Bravo cameras around and there's too much going on. What's the story there? Yeah, they. Um, she's filmed there in years past and they just decided they didn't want filming to go on in the neighborhood any longer. Wow. And so without permissions... We can't do it. So it has to be homeowners, you know, the county. There's a lot more that goes into it, just getting permits. And um, yeah. they just decided they don't want it around. So it's it's it was disappointing. <clears throat> Not to mention, can I just tell you that packing with Shannon Storm's door is exactly how you would envision it being. Complete chaos. <laughs> I got to her house yesterday and um, I mean, she's lived there for a while and the twins just went away to college. So she's got this huge house f- filled with stuff and it's her running from room to room, starting a project and then leaving that room and starting another project in another room. And I could just tell when I got there was like, oh, Lordy. And so I go, OK, well, <laughs> what day is the actual moving day? She's like yeah. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. I go, wait. 8 a.m. tomorrow. The next 8 a.m. in existence? That one? (laughs) Yeah, the one coming up? 8 a.m. That one? And I'm like, (laughs) oh, my God. And so not one thing in the kitchen had been packed. Not one. And when I tell you that Shannon has 500 plates minimum, and I'm not kidding one bit. And then I got almost all the plates packed. And this is like four hours in. And then she goes, oh, we forgot all the Christmas plates. (laughs) 
<laughs> where <laughs> yeah. where does she keep the Christmas plates? Are they they're not Apparently, ever... they were in another room. They were in oh. the garage or yeah. upstairs. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like you are never going to use all these plates and the amount of kitchen stuff it was just insane but of course we had fun and laughing but it was just exactly what you think packing with shannon would be like it, wow. it should be its own show it yeah really it should should be packing show. with shannon that would be <laughs> yeah. well so let's stay on the topic yeah. of shannon for a second because on the uh recent episode of real housewives of orange county you hosted a party at a pumpkin patch i mean i'm, I'm looking at that and i'm looking at you and i'm going you're miserable. You don't want to be at a freaking pumpkin patch. <laughs> well, uh, and of all the places for a girl from Oklahoma to do a party in Southern California, a pumpkin patch. I mean, yeah. could you take me further back to my roots? <laughs> yeah. Hay bales and uh, corn stalks. And I'm like, well, well, I feel like I'm right at home. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, and the pumpkin carving lady was way too pro. And the girls were like, they're picking out these like complicated stints. Souls, and I'm thinking that we're never let's just yeah. go with the traditional two triangles with the little smile and just keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, there's a lot of uh real easy sex jokes going on there, a lot of double entendre. I mean, come on, you guys, hey, let's cut a butthole in this thing. <laughs> Like I, I was glad to see that you did not participate in the butthole jokes, the butthole jokes. <laughs> I'm so proud, my girl. Yeah. That's my girl. I know, I know, yeah. right? I'm so, I'm so classy, very classy. Okay, so um, Shannon and wheelbarrows, yeah. Shannon came late. Um, her well, aunt, yes. She showed that she had been getting an IV for something. It was gross. It was all swollen and everything. She looked agitated. But then the story kind of unfolds about her between her and um, that sh she had been talking about child protective services and all that stuff. Um, who's right and who's wrong there? It's hard to tell from watching the TV show. I think the thing that really stirred up the pot was that then Jen told Gina that it was said at the tequila party. Right. And so that started the whole wheelbarrow rolling all over again. Ah, I see what you did there. See, Look at you. See? She Tom avoids Robert. the butthole jokes, everybody, but she'll go <laughs> straight in for the wheelbarrow material. I like that. Uh, okay, so, um, but I, I'm kind of feel. I know you and Shannon are pals. I mean, nobody would help anybody pack um, and move. <laughs> I don't even know if I'd help you pack. I feel I've helped you pack, um, I, but. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, but I feel bad for Gina that it keeps coming up. It's a one-time event. Everybody has one-time things that happen in their lives, you know? And uh, this just seems to keep resurfacing. And I can see, do you do you talk, do you feel the frustration or is it just really good editing? I definitely can feel that Gina's like, enough with this. This was a long time ago. And yeah. she just, you know, let's move on with the whole thing. And um, I think that that everyone feels that way, you know, that we don't need to keep rehashing it because it's not right. like it happened yesterday. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just resurfaced for some reason. And mm -hmm. it's, it's it, I don't know that it's going to end quite yet. So okay. stay tuned. Will there be, do you think that will be one of the topics still when the reunion tapes um, in a couple of weeks? I definitely think it'll be something that's discussed at the reunion. I mean, we, that you know, that's what the reunion's all about. We live it, then we watch it all, then we go talk about it all, and all the things that we didn't know were said and then are now festering up. And so all of those topics, it's a long day, and we go over pretty much everything that was controversial um, during the season. As you watch each episode are you collecting more information that you didn't know for the reunion? Like, especially about, you know, the stuff with you and Heather, even, are you personally like surprised and go, Oh, I need to bring that up. Do you make notes or how do you do that? Um, I, I definitely learn a lot watching the shows, especially because being new, a new member of the OC team, um, 
there was a lot of backstory. Like I didn't know anything about the the Gina situation with the DUI. I didn't even know about that when I when I joined um, on to be the friend. Um, and so that was all new information for me. So I'm learning as I'm watching the show, different things from the past that will definitely come up at the reunion. And now I'll be able to have an opinion about things that I wouldn't have necessarily had one about before because I wasn't privy to all the details. Yeah. What about your stuff though? What about your stuff with Heather? I mean, are you picking up any new things like, gosh, I didn't know she said that. And I'm going to add that in for some of the questions I have. Are you nervous about any of that or how are you, how are you, yeah, how I mean, are you preparing for that? I definitely get nervous with the reunion because it's just so much conflict and confrontation. And at the end of the day, I care about all of these women. And so even watching the conflict between, between them, excluding me, you know, is something that can can kind of hurt my heart. You know, I'm a sensitive soul. So watching them be unkind to one another that, you know, that kind of stirs me up a little bit, but with my stuff, um, I think more what I realize is the things I didn't say in the moment, because as Heather and I were having conflict, there were things I wish I would have said right then. And so now this gives me an opportunity to say those things I should have said in the moment. But as I was taking it all in, I didn't, I wasn't processing it enough to, to actually say and speak my mind, which is something I'm working on being better at in my life in general. So having the opportunity to say those things at the reunion is important to me. It's a good point because really that is don't doesn't everybody wish they had that in life in general? Like I wish I had a reunion because I wish I would have said this in that circumstance and I didn't, but now I get another chance to. <laughs> well, and that's interesting. I know because a lot of people like they dread the reunion um, just because it's like so stressful and it's just like a huge long day of conflict. But Shannon loves the reunion. And so I'm trying to use the Shannon approach because she's like the reunion your day. You can say everything that you didn't get to say or everything you want to say. And it's your chance to speak your mind. And so I'm trying to put it in the Shannon mindset. Never thought I'd say that. Shannon yeah. mindset. <laughs> no, <laughs> just I mean, that, kidding, Dan. And you know, would, I love you. <laughs> it would be great though if you could just do that in life. You know, every relationship you've had, every everything. If you could just go, well, wait till the reunion. I'm going to say all the things I wish I would have said. So that I know. Yeah, maybe people should like call up their friend after they have a big fight and say, "Listen, let's get together and have a reunion so we can rehash all of our problems." Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and bring cameras in. Um, yeah. And just to add a little more pressure, we have millions of people watching at the same time. And we have receipts. We have footage from our relationship from that you didn't know about from the past uh, six, eight months or whatever. <laughs> exactly. So all the things you think you're going to say, I have actual footage to back up what I'm going to say. Yeah. yeah. That's good okay. times. I want to, um, <laughs> a couple of things coming up today on this show. We're going to show the first frame from you filming masterpiece the controversial movie masterpiece that uh the one that you asked if heather would want to be part of and um so today right here on this podcast for those that are watching and not just listening you're gonna see, see a still frame of the one and only taylor armstrong today so i'm excited i'm excited for us to get back in the studio and finish masterpiece i i mean i'm thinking that we might get a chance to do that pretty soon yeah it's the um the, you know the sag strike is going on right now and as soon as some details with that are cleared up for for the production then um you're back in action sister um but we do it's have such one a great script we do have one frame that um, for you to show everyone. And um, also your other movie, Guardians, is done and uh, turned out really good. It's going to be coming out pretty soon. And that was all done before the strike. So you're in a good position. <laughs> Congrats. I know. I know. I'm excited. Thank you. And I'm super excited that I, have, I had my very first film role. Um, I got to be in a movie with Eric Roberts. I mean, that's about as cool as it gets. So, yeah, the first frame from masterpiece the big controversial movie that heather did not want to be in is coming up on this show here in just a few minutes so stick around for that all right so watch what happens live is coming up for you on tuesday and, and okay. um so the 
thing that's kind of crazy is I fly to New York on Monday to watch what happens on Tuesday, fly home on Wednesday and film the reunion on Thursday. Ooh, wow. And then, <laughs> and then a month so, of sleep before BravoCon. Wow. <laughs> exactly. So by the time, uh, by the time uh, Friday rolls around, I'm, I'm going to be uh, good and exhausted and I probably won't speak for about three days, but I'm going to be on with Lisa Barlow from Salt Lake City okay. and she is iconic and I have not met her before. So I'm mm. really looking forward to that. And I wish they wouldn't always book me with the gorgeous ones um, because now I got to sit next door. They think that about you too. So, oh. so you know, oh. when you meet one of these housewives, for the first time, like this one, this Lisa from Salt Lake. Are you guys just fake bitches, just faking it? Hey, oh, I'm a fan. Side kiss, side kiss. Is it just the <laughs> fakest thing you've ever done? Or in the top 10, at least? <laughs> I think it depends, really. I mean, because we all see, sometimes we we see a lot of each other at BravoCon. I didn't get to meet her at BravoCon. But um, our um, talent producer from OC is also the talent producer for Salt Lake City. So I was texting him yesterday and I'm like, I'm going to DM her just to say hi before we meet. So, and he loves her. So I'm hoping that that'll be some commonality that we can, um, we can share about Clark. Yeah. But are you, so you won't be like, bitch, this girl needs some. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually it's their premiere. So, oh. um, I don't think I'll get to see, I might get to see the episode before we, before we film together, but it's a big day for Salt Lake. Oh, okay. And, and we it, won't have a new episode out yet because we're filming on Tuesday. So right. our new episode won't air till Wednesday. So the pumpkin patch will be the last that I'll be able to talk about. We all want to see backstage at Watch What Happens Live. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. It'll be an exclusive of our little <laughs> Raw Show podcast here. So, um, yeah. Um, Okay. Yeah, we can actually um all I know um, I can we can communicate during my hair and makeup because my makeup artist in New York is one of the funniest human beings that you'll ever meet and she will keep you rolling laughing the whole time so you got to have some Priscilla and Julius during well, yeah. Let's go um let's do let's do our next show right then and there then. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Samantha Radcliffe, Sam who is in your movie Guardians with you, and she plays the bartender in that movie. Yep. Um, great girl, really cool. She's a uh, also excited that she was in a movie with you. She's been a fan since the Beverly Hills days, and hey Sam, big fan. Okay, so I got to tell you what happened. Listen to this, and then we're going to show your picture from Masterpiece. Okay. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, because you're not a little boy. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and you've never been one. Um, and you don't have one. You don't, you don't, um, you don't own one. You never purchased one. You never adopted one. You never gave birth to one. Right. You don't. So no little boys. No, no. So little dudes will do this for some reason. I'm, I'm positive that I did it when I was little. When you go into a public restroom the first time and you, you see a urinal for the first time because you don't have those at home. You're a little bit confused about how <laughs> that whole thing works. And you kind of have to go in, either your dad shows you or you just go, oh, that's, that's what you do. So when little guys go in, they're used to just dropping their drawers pretty much down to the ankles and then standing there and peeing. So you'll walk into a bathroom on occasion at some public event, public place, and there'll be a little dude in there with his pants around his ankles peeing. And you're like, oh, I remember I used to do that. You didn't know, you know, you, I, I, you didn't know. It's like, let him finish. And he didn't know what he's doing. So I see. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Little dudes. Cause I mean, they do when they get, when they get toilet trained, you know, they're standing there basically with, Nothing, no pants on or it's down around their ankles, whatever. So they do it at the urinal until they grow up enough to go, oh, no one's doing that. I should probably not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday, Taylor, I'm in a public restroom for a second and I walk in and I see that exact scenario with one exception. 
This is a 45 year old man. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? what is happening? I, I literally, you, it's a sharp, it's a, it's a tough <clears throat> move for me to make that sharp of a U-turn, <laughs> but I did it. I think I grazed a shoulder on a wall. I don't know. The adrenaline was going. I was trying to get out of there. I could, I've never seen a grown ass man, and I, I circle the word ass, standing at a uh, urinal with his pants all the way down on the floor like that. It's You're not going to be able to unsee this. No, I can't. I can't. Okay, so are you ready to reveal the big first Im I mean it's not a big deal it's just a still frame an image of you from your um your role in masterpiece and you play a tv anchor named Shallon, Shallon Craig Craig that's a cool name that's right and mm -hmm. um, you know what I one thing i loved about the script um there is a an earlier version of Shallon yeah um and Instead of it being Shallon one and Shallon two, they called it Young Shallon. Hmm. <laughs> now Which here's I'm just gonna say um, it's everything they can maybe do not to call me Old Shallon. That would be the alternative. See, they took the nice way out. Shallon one and Shallon two. No, that's maybe. not that's not screenplay protocol. You see, you got to write it in. <laughs> Um, <laughs> typically though, how it's written in the screenplays hat will show in the, in the credits. And so you look for young Shallon and they, they wouldn't want to put old Shallon in there. They just, just cause you're like modern day TV anchor girl, but it, I, it could have said, mo it could have said modern day Shallon, modern day Shallon, and then flashback Shallon, something like that. It's a lot of words, but yeah, <laughs> but, but I mean, she's, um, the girl that played you as young Shallon Craig was how old is she in the movie to, like, in her 20 or something right 20s yeah, yeah 20 well yeah because then yeah. when I'm old Shallon um yeah <laughs> because then it's 20 it's about 20 years later when I'm me yeah when and, you're old Shallon but look how lovely you look Shallon. as old <laughs> old Taylor <laughs> old right. um, I'm expecting some good editing yeah. Well, let's take a look at the. Um, are you ready? Are you so excited? I'm this ready. Is, I'm super this excited. Is, this is the first um, time I'm seeing this. Yeah. So um, here it is. Um, we will step back and just put it on screen for a couple of seconds. And here it is. Wow. There you go. What do you think? You look like a TV anchor. I think I need. I think I need to call KTLA and see if they have any openings. Yeah. You know who's going to see it and call you immediately is Dallas Rains. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby, how you doing? <laughs> do some cocktails. I'll be over at the Hoosies and, you know, let's get together. I didn't, know, I didn't realize. I didn't know you did that. We should talk about TV and some stuff. I got some stuff. That's right. I'll, wear, I'll wear my cufflinks and uh, we'll see you there. Talk about the weather. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> I love Dallas Rains. He's, he's the best. I For those that don't know, Dallas has the, the, uh, been the weather guy on which network is it? NBC? The, the, uh, in Los Angeles on television for decades. And he's a piece of work. And that... he is like, I mean, there is no such thing as young uh, Dallas and old Dallas because he doesn't age. He's yeah. like a soap opera star. He looks exactly the same. That guy is it's amazing. Something some movements on camera that are unbelievable mm -hmm. i think subconsciously he's doing some like sexual moves for the ladies uh in the audience uh to show that he's still got some game because <laughs> right? you can just w watch it next time you watch see if you don't think he's doing that but that's just for our Los Angeles area um and the valley viewers so anyway okay well there you go i, I mean I, everybody I, knows who he is he's i amazing. um um and you can watch him on you can pick him up on youtube and check out some of his action too but um well congratulations on everything sister i mean that the um uh, one movie in the can one to come as soon as the the screen actors guild strike and they've got some some different uh waivers and interim agreements that that are taking place so that'll all take care of itself but congratulations on your uh movies so far and um how do you feel about those before we sign off today do you, how did you feel leaving the set and after you 
finished filming. Those are some late nights. Yeah, I had so much fun doing it. I just love it. Um, it was you know, at first I was a little bit nervous being a rookie actor and um, kind of getting my feet wet with the industry. And I learned a lot and it was a lot more fun and a lot less intimidating than I thought it was going to be. And I, I will say those were some late nights. I filmed my last scene of Guardians. I think I got in the car at 3 a.m. Yeah, so, it was crazy. It's days. a lot of... Um waiting around and then okay go you're on now go 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 <laughs> so right, much right. waiting around and you have to kind of keep your momentum you know for staying in character when you do have a lot of that waiting around time so that's something that um, i had to learn it would have been um it kind of would have been nice if uh heather or one of your other bravo sisters would have been in the movie with you i mean even just the waiting around part would it would have been nice for that too but i mean it would have been kind of cool to see you guys you know, interact and on camera together in a movie. I thought so too. I thought it would have been really fun to have not only a friend there, but to have someone um, in the same movie. Um, yeah. that's, that's a friend. So maybe next time. Yeah. Maybe next time. Okay. I'm looking well, forward to the premiere of guardians. Yeah. The I'm looking forward to it also. So, uh, um, well, congrats on that. And then watch what happens live. So we're going to try to do our next show from backstage at watch what happens live and that's tuesday right let's yep let's do it okay all right get some rest between that you got a crazy schedule coming up sister and uh, i love you and i'll talk to you again here in a few days okay i'll talk to you soon bye rick the raw show with rick and taylor 